Happy Sabbath, everyone, and welcome to another Sabbath day of worship and praise. We're happy that you are here to worship with us. And of course, as we sing our song service today, we pray that you will sing in our homes. You will sing with us as Christ intermingle with us and bless us today. So we pray that you will come together for corporate worship, even though it is virtual. Yes. A blessing awaits everyone. Amen. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood. To every believer, the promise of God. The violence offender who truly bring your noblest lays. That's him 34. Savior's glory 
Christian join to sing that's him 10 come Christian join to sing Hallelujah. it's indeed a blessing Your hearts come, on high. lift your hearts on high. Hallelujah, amen. Let praises fill the sky. Hallelujah, amen. He is our guide and friend to us in condescend. a day that will be yes, when his face we shall see when we shall not only sing in harmony down here but we'll sing in heaven the places we'll sing and never get tired we will walk the streets of gold let the church say praise the lord, praise the lord. as we continue to sing we are going to give of our best to the master that's what we are here to do give of the strength of our youth we are going to turn to our opening hymn, 572. 572. Give off your best to the master. Give him your royal devotion. Give 
worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord God our maker. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all oh that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not his benefits towards me. This is the Sydney Seventh-day Adventist School Sabbath School, and we're glad to have all of you worshiping with us this morning. We have our visitors in church with us. Yes, we are happy that this morning a few of us are here. Welcome to Sabbath School. There's also the visitors we have on our Facebook and YouTube channels. We're glad to have you visitors. Please, wherever you are, join in the worship. Sing from home. Pray with us so that the Spirit of God will bless all of us in this combined worship today. May your worship with us be spiritually rewarding. We will now have our scripture reading by Brother Kahil Blake. The scripture reading is taken from Exodus 4, verse 1 to 4. Exodus 4, verse 1 to 4. And it reads, And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice, nor, for they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thine hand? And he, and he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it onto the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled before it. For an ass. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand, and take it by the tail. And he took forth his hand, and caught it. And it became a rod in his hand. This is the portion of God's holy word. Let 
Let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise, Lord, for this another Sabbath morning where your people can gather in the homes and church, wherever we are, to lift up and praise your holy name. Lord, you have been a good God. And this morning we can say safely through another week. God has brought us on our way. We have come now, Lord, to seek a blessing from your hands. And we lift up your name and give you thanks. Because indeed, you're a good God. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your watch here and your tender mercies towards your children. In spite of the fact, Lord, that some of us have failed you, we have sinned and come short. But we thank you for grace. Like now, O oh Lord, we have found grace in you. And for this, we are thankful. Bless our worship today. Bless those who will take part in the Sabbath school. May the service this morning be a blessing to all of us. With the forgiveness of our sins. Open our hearts, Lord, to receive that special blessing from you. We ask in Jesus' name. Sabbath School Investment Program. And for those who have joined us since, and in particular, we are rejoicing with 16 new members in our congregation. Just for you to know what Sabbath School Investment is, I will just give a quick summary. Investment is a partnership. It is a program that brings additional blessing in your life. It involves at least two persons yourself and your God, and it is a pledge, a pledge by each person to do something. You will achieve more. You will be placed in a position for God to bless you. Remember, Jesus is the first investor. He invested all of heaven for you. Have you done the same? Remember, it takes at least two persons to make the investment work. Sabbath School Investment Program is one way to respond to God's investment in us. Remember, it's a partnership. As you contemplate the question, please listen to Sister Daly as she gives us a special song.
a beautiful reminder in song of what Sabbath School investment is all about. A commitment of ourselves to God. After all, he owns everything. When did it start? 138 years ago, this year making 139. This mission of the church needed help. And they needed to do projects that were outside of the realm of the use for tithe and offering. So they got together. The members then got together and decided that they would do projects and the funds from the projects would be used to fund the mission of the church. That is where it started. And today in the Seventh-day Adventist Church worldwide, Sabbath School Investment is a program used for mission projects in Jamaica and all over the world. So you may not be able to travel to various countries, but you can contribute through your means. And the Sabbath School investment is not only about finances. You will hear more about that when we get back from our lesson study review. So we will have the primary down by Ashland Brown, the PowerPoint by Leanne Barnett, and the Cornerstone by Riley Barnett, after which our church pastor, Pastor Honor Montague, will do the adult lesson review. I'll return after that as we continue with our investment program. May God bless you as we divide the word together. is show proper respect to everyone. Happy Sabbath everyone. My name is Ashland Brown and today I will be reviewing the primary lesson. Lesson 3. The topic of the lesson is loving the unloving. The memory verse is show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of the believers. And it is taken from 1 Peter 2 verse 17. The message is God want me to include others who get left out. Jesus, Simon, and Mary are in this story today. Jesus was invited to Simon's house for a party because he had healed him from leprosy. He wanted to save thanks. He invited many important people. Mary was also there. She was considered as a nobody. Everyone knew Jesus had cast seven devils out of her. She knew that she was not welcomed, but wanted to say thank you, Jesus, for what he had done for her. She took a small jar of alabaster, jar with perfume ointment, and poured it on his head and feet. She cried tears of love as she wiped his feet with her ear. The fragrance filled the room. The people thought it was a waste to buy such expensive perfume when the money could be given to the poor. Simon thought Mary was such a great sinner. If Jesus was a prophet, he would not allow her to touch him. Jesus knew their thoughts and told them a story. Jesus showed how much he appreciated what she had done and spoke about the great love Mary had shown him. Jesus is loving, Jesus loves and cares for those who feel left out by allowing them to feel respect and wanted. As children of God, we must be kind, caring, and loving to everyone, especially those who are different feeling, unwanted, and on 
appreciate it. Thank you. He is not here, but is risen. Remember what he spoke to you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of the sin of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. They remembered. They remembered his word. They returned from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Luke twenty-four, verse six to nine. PowerPoint. We can share our hopes for eternal life because of Jesus' resurrection. In closing events of the resurrection day, darkness wrapped around the cross where Jesus hung. The crowd, the crowd stopped mocking him, but they also felt guilty. The disciples saw their fondest hopes vanish. The last rays of the setting sun ushered in the Sabbath. The Son of God lay in the quiet. In in Joseph's too, and purchased us with his own life. During the Sabbath hour, sleepless eyes searched the prophecies. People's attention was drawn to Jesus resting in the tomb. The people brought their sick and suffering to the temple courts and were seeking Jesus the healer. Religious leaders at the time could not explain the prophecies about the Messiah. The priests feared that the priests and the elders feared Jesus would rise from the dead, as the prophecies were told. Pilate allowed them to place 100 guards at Jesus' tomb, a large stone, and a Roman seal. At the, the first day of the week, an angel sent from heaven, surrounded by beams of God's glory, called out to the Son of God to come out and go of the tomb at God's command. As the stone was rolled away, Jesus, the Prince of the Universe, arose and came out of the tomb. The host of angels surrounded the tomb, bowed low, and adored their king. Soldiers who witnessed the glorious scene fainted. As the heavenly glory faded, the soldiers hurried into the city, spreading the news to the people. The priests and elders gave large amounts of money to the soldiers, telling them to say that Jesus' disciples stole him away while the guards were asleep. Early the next morning, women who followed Jesus went to his tomb. An angel greeted them and told them that Jesus had risen. After hearing the woman's report, John ran to the tomb and also saw it was empty. First to see Jesus after his resurrection was Mary Magdalene, weeping bitterly. She couldn't even recognize him to her tears. It was when he called her by her name, she recognized Jesus and worshipped him. The resurrection of Jesus is a promise of hope for your future. It is a belief in the resurrection of the saved at the second coming of Jesus. This hope causes us to rejoice and to believe in, in him. When Jesus was resurrected, some people who had been dead were also resurrected with him. At his second coming, Jesus will call all the righteous to, to glorious immortal life. How can you obtain this amazing gift of salvation that Jesus purchased for us through the sacrificial death? Happy Sabbath everyone, my name is Jolly Barnett and I'm from the Cornerstone Lesson and I will be giving you a summary of lesson number three. Do you want to get well? Power text. Yeah, power text, key text. When Jesus saw him laying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Then Jesus said to him, get up. Pick up your mat and walk. John 5, verse 6 to 8. The summary of this lesson is that, that the, there is a layman who was located beside the, um, the, the pool of Bethsaida. And it was said that an angel would come at noon and stir the water 
and it, the first person inside it get healed. The lame, the particular lame man that was talked about in the story, he wasn't able to reach the water in time. So each time when he when he went to the water, he was always late. Everybody who was with him and who who, who had gotten he healed, they were selfish and they didn't care, they didn't come back to try to help out the same person, help out someone who was in the same condition as them. One day, when Jesus was walking past, he saw him and he asked him, and he asked him if he wanted to get healed. As usual, the beggar, he was a beggar, so he was asking for money. He was asking Jesus for some coins, and Jesus didn't demand his faith on the spot. But he said, get up, take up your mat and walk. And miraculously, the man, started, the man was able to walk. And he was walking around, happy, joyful, and praising God. But the Pharisees and the, and the Levites, they were very angry because they were saying, how was this man healed on the Sabbath? And it was, it was a sacred day for them. So they were asking him, who was the name of the man who did it? But he didn't know who it was. So he, he wasn't able to give them a response. A couple of days after, Jesus appeared himself to him again and he was talking and he introduced himself to um, Jesus. So he, he introduced himself as Jesus. The latter part of the story, it can be seen that Jesus was teaching the he, Jesus was teaching the Pharisees a very important lesson. That he was indeed the, the Son of God and that he was sent to earth for a mission. He was trying to explain to them that he has no power without it. Him and God works together, and we've, since both of them work together, he has the power to heal both the, the blind and the lame. But they didn't believe him, they thought he was committing blasphemy. So they went as far as to against the, the plot with the Romans to kill him. The lesson of this story is that with faith, we can conquer all. Thank you, and have a blessed Sabbath. Welcome to our adult Sabbath school lesson review. The topic for this week is all future generations. And the memory text is, but now I found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Genesis chapter six, verse eight. In our lesson review this morning, I will seek to answer the following questions. Question number one. What did sin do to God's creation? Number two, how did God check the spread of sin? Number three, what were the critical characteristics of the person God used to accomplish this huge task? What was involved, that is question number four, what was involved in the covenant made with this person? Number five, in what ways is God's grace revealed in the covenant with this person before the flood? And the final question is, what does the covenant God made with humanity after the flood teach us about his universal love for us. Lord and Father, we invite your presence now as we study your words. Help us to understand your truth in Jesus' name. Amen. And so we will begin our lesson review by going back to the beginning, back to the creation back to where it all began. Everything that God or came from the hand of God was perfect. In fact, the opinion of a perfect God was that everything from the rivers to the trees, from the fish to the greatest beasts of the field was very, very good. Then sin 
entered God's perfect creation and things changed. Things weren't very, very good anymore. God's perfect creation started to suffer with the entrance of sin into the world. Order became disorder. Decay began on a mission to dissolve all that came from the hands of God. And humans, God's crowning act of creation became the host of sin. And so as the human family started to spread across the earth, sin started to spread also. And so was rebellion and evil of every kind. And so false worship came up. Murder came about. Adultery came about. And the list of sin goes on and on and on. Sin led to rebellion. And the rebellion on the earth got so bad that God was sorry that he made man. It's recorded according to Genesis chapter 6 and verse 6. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. This story of God's concern for humanity and the great flood has been recorded by all the major religions of the world. It may not be the same version as the Christian Bible version, however, but they have the same, well, they have some ver, uh, version of the great flood. You see, the oldest recorded version of the flood is found in the Epic of Galgam Gilgamesh. This is what it has to say about the condition of the earth at this time. And I quote, in those days, the world teemed, the people multiplied, the world be hollowed or bellowed like a wild bull. And the great God was aroused by the clamor. Enlil heard the clamor, and he said to the gods in council, the uproar of mankind is intolerable and sleep is no longer possible by reason of the Babel. So, so the gods agreed to exterminate mankind. In other words, the situation was very, very bad. According to verse 11 of Genesis chapter 5, this is how God sees it. God says, the earth was ruined. The Bible says the earth was ruined in the sight of God and the earth was filled with violence. And so a loving God, seeing the debilitating effect that sin had on his creation, had to do something to curb the spread of sin. Or may I put it this way, the curb the spread of this terrible disease. For sin is like a bacterium. And we know what a bacterium is. The bacterium divides by simple fission. One bacterium will divide into two bacteria and in a space of 24 hours, one bacterium be will become some uh, 16 million new bacteria, uh, bacteria, and within 48 hours, you have billions of bacteria. That's how sin is. It spreads as it gets a hold of its host. That's human being. And as human beings spread throughout the world, sin spreads also. It, if, it's, if it's not checked, and that we are talking about sin. If it's not checked, it will continue to spread. And so God, in his grace and mercy, started to implement his plan to put check on the spread of sin. 
he looked through the entire world and saw that all mankind was contaminated with sin. But praise God, one man stood out. His name was Noah. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 9 says concerning Noah, he was a righteous man, he was blameless, and he walked with God. In God's eyes, Noah was a good candidate through whom he could fulfill his purpose. Noah would listen to God, obey him, and trust him, and so God could work through him. However, Genesis chapter 6 and verse 6 made me look, at, uh, uh, look differently at Noah. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 8, but Noah found grace or favor in the sight of the Lord. It tells me that Noah was someone like me contaminated by sin, messed up sometimes, and needed grace, just as I or anyone today needs the grace of God in order to be rescued from sin. What made Noah stood out? It was his willingness to listen and obey God. And so God knew that at this critical juncture, that if he should establish his covenant with Noah, it would be carried out. In other words, God could trust Noah. Here is the question this morning. Can God trust you at this crucial juncture in our Earth's history? This is what God said to Noah, having established that he could trust him. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 18. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall come into the ark, you and your sons, your wife, and your son's wives with you. Let's get something clear here. What is a covenant? A covenant is an agreement. And so we can say that God and humankind entered into an agreement. Note, however, that one person cannot enter into an agreement. It is always two or more persons. And each person is expected to keep his or her side of the agreement. We know God will keep his side of the agreement. In this agreement, humanity was expected to obey. Noah was told that he and his family should go into the ark. They had their part to play. And if they did not do it, they would have broken the covenant or the agreement. And guess who would lose here or lose out here? Certainly not God. Noah would come up as the loser. Noah would come up as the loser, not God, and suffer the consequences. And we know what the consequences would have been. He would have died like all the other antediluvians. God, referring to the covenant as my covenant, speaks of how gracious God is. And I say, Amen. Saving humanity is non negotiable as far as God is concerned. Foremost in God's mind is the salvation of humanity that he loves so much. And so he always takes the initiative. 
He always takes the first step. In other words, God does not wait until you run to him in order to reach out to you for your salvation. He takes the first step and he does everything in his power to save humanity. Why? Because it gives him great joy when the people whom he loves are saved. Then we see God using the term covenant again in Genesis chapter 9, verse 12 through 13. And God said, This is the sign of the covenant which I make between me and every living creature that is with you. For all future generations, I set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. It's as if God was saying, listen, people of the earth. Listen, people of the earth. Listen, animals of the earth. I have made a covenant with you. And I, because of whom I am, has placed my signature in the clouds. And no one or nothing can change it for all generations to come. No powers on earth can alter to obey the Lord or not. In this sense, however, the concept of covenant is not used as it is elsewhere in the Bible when talking about the relationship between God and the humans. In other words, uh, elsewhere, human beings are expected to keep their side of the covenant. It's either you obey or you suffer the consequences. But here in this covenant, God is saying, no matter what, nothing will change the agreement that I've had with humanity. Once you see the rainbow in the sky, you will know that I will not destroy the earth by uh, the entire earth with a flood a second time. This covenant was signed with a beautiful rainbow of God. And that was after God unleashed torrents of rain upon the earth, flooding the entire earth, ending all life on the face of the earth, except for Noah and all that went into the ark with him. Here is the record in Genesis chapter 7 and verse 23. And God says, he, in fact the Bible says, he blotted out every living thing that was on the face of the ground. Man and animals and creeping things and birds of the air, they were blotted out from the earth. Only Noah was left and those that were with him in the ark. And so everyone, all men, and all flesh was blotted out from the earth. And only Noah and those who were with him in the boat were left. This is the first time that the concept of the remnant was mentioned in the Bible. In this instance, the remnant was Noah and his family. They were left because of God's grace and mercy. And I say amen. They survived because of what God did for them. However important their cooperation was, Whatever Noah's covenant obligation were, obligations were, and no matter how faithful he was or he executed them, the only hope, or may I say his only hope, or their only hope, was God's mercy. And the, 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 it, it is, the truth is the same for us today. Our only hope for living for all eternity 
for enjoying salvation is through God's mercy. Let the church say amen. And so my brothers and sisters, God being a loving God has done everything and will continue to do everything in his power for your salvation and for mine. So, remember the six questions I ask at the beginning of the review this morning. The first question was, what did sin do to God's creation? What is the answer? Sin ruined the earth. The second question was, how did God check the spread of sin? He sent a huge flood that destroyed all flesh except Noah and all who was in the ark with him. Number three, where were the critical, what were the critical characteristics of the person God used to accomplish his huge, or this huge task? He was righteous. That's the answer. He was blameless. He walked with God. But here is it. He still needed God's grace. So Noah was just like me and like you. We all need God's grace in order to enjoy salvation. Number four, what was involved in the covenant God made with this person? Here is the answer. God's grace and mercy and obedience on the path of humanity. Number five, in what ways is God's grace revealed in the covenant with this person before the flood? Here is it. God referred to the covenant as what? My covenant. It took, he took the initiative to save humanity. So God took what? The initiative to save humanity. And finally, what does the covenant made, or the covenant God made with humanity after the flood teach us about his universal love for us? Here is the answer. And this is my final answer. God made a covenant with the world that would impact what? All flesh and all future generations. And humans' obedience or disobedience cannot and will not alter it. Every time we see the rainbow in the clouds, we will be reminded that God will not destroy the earth by water a second time. My brothers and sisters, let us remain faithful to God. Let us spend time digging deep in his word, learning more and more about God's love as he will do everything for our salvation. Lord, help us to understand your truth and live by your words. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Lesson three, caught in a cave. Memory verse, let us do good to others and not become weary. Galatians 6 verse 9 The message We can do good even when others are not nice to us. The story was all about David and King Saul. King Saul was jealous of David and he wanted to hurt him but david was good to king saul despite how king saul felt about him thank you thank you pastor thank you children for your lesson review this morning well, guess what? I just love it, I just love it, I just love it when the Spirit of God takes over our worship. Did you hear the extent to which God invested in you and I? What he gave up, that was his portion of the investment. And even when it looked like it was going bad, he still turned it around. 
because one of the natural part of investment is that you must see results. So this morning, last year when we launched our in gathering program for 2021, some persons bought into the idea and they started an investment project which is five months old. I have with me this morning in our studio, in our church studio, two persons who started the investment. And I'm going to ask them three questions which they're going to answer shortly. They're going to do it short. Three questions for them. And then you will learn. Remember my question was? Remember my question was, when we left before we go to the lesson study, is investment only about money? Let us hear. We have Brother Grant and Sister Gil Fillion this morning with us. And I have three questions. Brother Grant and Sister Gil Fillion, you can answer simultaneously. What are you investing in? Um, I am investing in the souls of men and financial. I want, I want to make sure that even my friends on YouTube and Facebook is hearing this. So whatever needs to be done, please lift Sister Gilfillian's voice for me. Okay, I am investing in the souls of men and also a financial investment. Similar to Sister Gilfillian, when the investment program launched, I decided to get in a prayer relationship for the souls of men, souls of some young persons that once walked with us and others that I believe need to be saved in God's kingdom. So that leads me to the next question, because when you have an investment, there can either be a gain or a loss. And Sister Grant, yes. before even that, you know, just like we talk about covenant, when I went home, I got down on my knees and I said to God, God, I'm entering into a covenant with you that you'll bless me with souls and financially. And I see where he's working. Didn't I tell you that yes. investment will be a blessing to you yes. as well as to the mission you gave it to? Yes. Now, the next question I have to ask is, what or how much have you gained as a result of your investment projects? What or how much? I can say I've gained 100%. I'm still more there is because, brethren, um, for the month of January, one of the investments as I asked God for a soul, and since this year, the January, the Lord has blessed me with one soul so far, one precious soul. And guess what? I see many more because I ask him for each month that will bless me with a soul, and I see the others. And guess what? I also entered into a financial arrangement with him. And I said, Lord, help me to put aside even a thousand dollars per month. You know, it's not easy. And I started, I started. And last month when I was to do the take out my investment money, I didn't remember. And the Spirit of God said to me, remember that thousand dollar. And brethren, wherever, wherever I could have find the money, I had to go and find it and put it down. So far, the Lord has blessed me so that I can lay aside a thousand dollars each month as a financial investment with him. On a personal level, for me, the Lord wakes me very early every morning for at least one hour. I am communicating with the Lord on behalf of those that I chose to pray for, that he allowed me to pray for. For me, I am finding myself coming closer to the Lord. Amen. Out of the clear blue sky, I have seen persons that I have been praying for call me to tell me that they are tired of this world and they want their hearts to be given to the Lord. Mm -hmm. On my way to church as I walked this morning, one of those persons that I have not seen for years, I saw them and they told me that they are now worshiping at the Portmore Church. That is a blessing for me. Yes. Others that have not worshiped anywhere, I found them all the way over in the western side of the country and they have started worshiping the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Here in another, again is a brother that I chose to pray for because of his health. He was supposed to 
put in a stint in his heart. And by the grace of God, when he went to the heart foundation to get himself checked, there was no problem found by the specialist that checked him. And, he, and he's in a recovery process. I am seeing hearts being changed for God. For me, that is a tremendous result, return on my investment with the Lord. Didn't I tell you that investment brings blessings yes. twofold? My last question, quickly, Sister and Brother Grant. Sister Gilfilly and Brother Grant. Have you lost anything? No. I have gained, as I said, I've gained 100% and there's still more to be added. I say it is good to really trust God, build that relationship with him and God stands, you know, back of his promises. Whatever you, he says he will do, he will do it. Remember I said that mine is just to intercede with God on behalf of persons. Prayer is, a rela is, a, is the establishment of a relationship. And in this covenant, I find personally tremendous blessing because I am getting to know my God to a different level that I never knew him before. I am learning to trust him and I'm seeing where persons are coming to the Lord. So I am delighted to share with the audience today, the worldwide audience, that I have lost absolutely nothing. I am gaining more as a result of investing time with the Lord for others to come to know him. God is in the business of saving souls. And that is what I am all about. Amen. Brothers and sisters, in church, on YouTube, on Facebook, this project has no loss. Jesus has invested in you and he has invested in me. And this morning, just in case the Holy Spirit impressed you to become a partner with Christ and you are not sure of what to do, here are a few suggestions that you can do. You can invest in a small group. Sabbath school units can get together and invest. You can do your personal investments. When they started this project, they, some per persons invested fruit trees. Some were cynical and invested a fruit tree that was not good. But when the first yield came in, because God blessed it, they realized that this project and a partnership with God reaps rich dividends. Then you can invest in health. You can invest in your children's education. You can do family investments as a family get together, choose a project, work on it. You can invest your time, do some Bible readings with someone, and this is the age of technology. Make a commitment to send a Bible text or something. The children are not excluded. You have friends, write the Bible text on a piece of paper. Share it with those you come in contact with children or you're techie wise or children are techie wise. So you can do it on your WhatsApp or whatever social media you use while you keep the so social different distances. You can improve on a talent, invest your talents to God and be a part of this program. If you so desire, we can, we can help you with your commitment. We have suggestions that we can give to you. And for those who are members of the church and in the WhatsApp group, I will share with the leaders there so they can post suggestions for you and commitment cards for you to use. Become a partner with God. You have nothing to lose only blessings untold to gain. So from Sabbath school this morning, as Brother McCarthy brings the curtain down, let us remember, like our scripture reading told us this morning, that God asked Moses, what is in your hand? Look at your situation this morning and decide what is it you have. Give it to God and you know the wondrous things that was done with Moses' rod. God can do much with your little. Lay it in his hand. Get in a covenant relationship with him and watch him bless your life. Brother McCarthy will close us out with a special song. When I look back at what I thought was living, I'm amazed at the price I chose to pay 
And to think I ignored what really matters Cause I thought the sacrifice would be too great But when I finally reached the point of giving in I find the cross was calling even then And even though it took dying to survive I've never felt this much alive For I am crucified with Christ And yet I live Not I but Christ that lives within me His cross will never ask for more Than I can give For it's not my strength but His For I am crucified with Christ And yet I live When I hear the Savior's call for daily dying I will bow beneath the cross of Calvary And let my will surrender to his piercing purpose That holds me to the cross yet sets me free And I will glory in the power of the cross The things I had for gain I count as lost And by his suffering I'll identify And by his resurrection power I am alive For I am crucified with Christ And yet I live Not I but Christ that lives within me His cross will never ask for more than I can give. For it's not my strength but His. For I am crucified with Christ and yet I live. For I am crucified with Christ, and yet I live. Not I, but Christ that lives within me. His cross will never ask for more than I can give. For it's not my strength, but His. For I am crucified with Christ And yet I live For I am crucified with Christ And yet I Our God is in the business of saving souls. And as members of the church worldwide, it should be our joy, our desire to see, to see sinners saved in the kingdom of God. This moment may I invite you wherever you are to make a covenant with God, to commit your lives, to reach out, to to fulfill the mission of the church in bringing this gospel to everyone that their souls may be saved in God's kingdom likewise. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed is your holy name. Your works are just and good. It is your desire, Heavenly Father, that your children will come in a relationship with you, 
that you will take them into the new Jerusalem. It is your desire, that is why you sent your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to suffer, to die, to be beaten, to be spot upon, to be persecuted, in order that through his shed blood, we can have life and have it more abundantly. Today, as we join in this investment program, we are praying, Father, that through your grace, your people everywhere, starting with me, and here at Sydney, young and old, we will see the need and have this burden that we will reach out and touch lives. We see, Father, that this world is dying. Things are happening so fast. The bird pangs of this hurt are crying out for your coming. And Father, we cannot go into your everlasting kingdom by ourselves. Therefore, Father, we pray that everyone that is listening, those that are worshiping in other churches across the world, even now and across Jamaica, you will lay even one soul on their heart that they will labor in prayer. They will labor through your words. They will labor through some means whereby they will bring that soul to your saving grace. As we worship you now, Lord, cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. And I beseech you by the grace that you bestow so bountifully on your children that you will save, your, save us all. Bless us now and fill us with your spirit that the work that is before us, we will engage the battle knowing that you are our captain, you are our Lord and master, and with you, victory is guaranteed. Lead now in our lives, bless and keep us, and may through our influence, souls will be born for your everlasting kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So from Sabbath School this morning, thank you for joining us and please be back next week Sabbath morning where we will have another worship, worshipful experience in our Sabbath School. May God bless you as we continue to worship. There's a covenant sweet It, it was, was written for me It's a promise that I could be From all my sin and my shame Even high It was signed and confirmed on a hill. So I'll rest my case at the cross. For now I have someone to champion. Justified, satisfied, oh, I have it all, so I'll rest my case at the cross. Don't feel sorry. See, I'm in. 
but you grants mercy and love. All my burdens he lifts, and all my sins he forgives, and every trial is one through. What a powerful messaging song. I want to take this opportunity to welcome us all to our final day of our Youth Week of Prayer. It has been a real blessing to be worshiping and listening to the words from the speakers, the word of the Lord from the speakers. And today we are going to set the tone for the final segment of the Week of Prayer worship session by singing some songs of praise. We'll be doing some lively songs and then we'll be doing some more meditative ones. Wherever you are, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook or even on Zoom, just invite you to get in the attitude of worship and sing along with us because as our praises go up, the blessings will come down. We are going to pray before we begin. Oh, Heavenly Father, we are very grateful that you have spared our unworthy lives so that we could be here today. And we know that you spare our lives so that we can fulfill the purpose that you have in mind for us. I ask that as we sing songs of praises to your name, that you will wash and cleanse us so that our praise can come out of pure lips. Help us to put self aside and to just magnify you alone. As we sing, I pray that burdens will be lifted up those who feel heavy laden. I pray that a heart of praise will just be created in everyone who participates in this our segment of praise and at the end of it may we all be drawn closer to you and look forward even more forward to heaven in Jesus' name I pray amen our first song will be come let's magnify the Lord
The Holy Ghost power is moving just like a magnet. The Holy Ghost power is moving just like a magnet. It's moving here, moving there, just like the days of Pentecost. The Holy Ghost power is moving just like a magnet. Let's go again. The Holy Ghost power is moving just like a magnet. The Holy Ghost power is moving just like a magnet. It's moving here, moving there, just like the day of Pentecost. The Holy Ghost power is moving just like a magnet. And you know there is power in the blood. From your burden of sin, there is power in the blood. Power in the blood. Would you are evil of victory win? There is wonderful power in the blood. Oh, there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. The working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. And we're gonna take it down again and we're gonna sing Holy Spirit rain down. Then we're gonna sing there's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And we're gonna sing He is here. Hallelujah. Spirit rain down, rain down. Oh, comfort her and friend. How we need your touch again, Holy Spirit. Stand 
of the Holy Spirit among us and let us bask in his presence and in the love of the Lord. Sixty. Him two hundred and sixty, over or me, Holy Spirit. Yeah. 
Spirit. Thou canst fill me, gracious Spirit, though I cannot tell thee how, but I need thee, great me, need thee, come, oh come and fill me now, fill me now, fill me now, Jesus, come and fill me now, fill me with thy heart. I'm heading to the promised land. Of course, the promised land is filled with milk and honey. And I want to ensure that I secure myself into the promised land. That brother, I don't have time to even look at him, you know, because I am heading to the promised land. I should visit the short team, but I am just too busy because I am heading to the promised land. Um, I don't even have time to talk to my sister because I'm ensuring that I make it to heaven. All of what I am doing, I am just trying to make it to heaven. And I'm, oh yes, I am going to heaven. Yes, because I am a shy person. I don't really like to talk to people. So, you're only on this journey to heaven by yourself? Is, he, doesn't that get a little bit lonely? I really don't get lonely um, because I'm heading to heaven. I am happy to know that I can secure myself to heaven or in heaven. But why not? alone. Yes, we have to be serious about our soul salvation, but we also have to work for the salvation of others. As a matter of fact, from the day that we gave ourselves to Christ, we became enlisted in the army of soul winners. The blessings of Jesus will be in our hearts if we can bring others to him. I understand that, you know, sister, but I personally take soul winning as something that the Holy Spirit will do. I don't need to win a soul. I don't even know how to preach like that. While the Holy Spirit will handle the matter of the soul winning, it is you who is the medium. You see, there will be no one in heaven with a starless crown. If you enter, there will be some soul in the courts of glory that has found an entrance there through your instrumentality. Then why not entreat the Lord to put upon you his spirit, that you may be able to awaken an interest in the truth in the minds of those around you. Think of your neighbors and friends and relatives who are out of Christ. 
Those, think of those you have left in various foreign lands. How much do you care for their souls? You should be so filled with love for the lost souls that you cannot forbear working for the salvation of souls. What you need is Jesus. He says, Whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into eternal life. If the rich blessing of Jesus is in your heart, you will also be able to refresh. Now you must go. You must use the time, talent, and resources the Lord has given you and reach out to those who are dying in sin. You must go. I say you must go. But will you go? I will go. We will now have the affirmation of faith. So my, 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 my friends, um, where are you going? We're going to the promised land. You're going to the promised land, but um, who are you? We are one big, big family. family. Wow. We are so excited about going for Jesus that we affirm our faith every moment. Please join with us as we affirm our faith by repeating Revelations 14, verse 6 to 12. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all the nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the, and the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and received his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. And they have no rest, day nor night. Who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The church is now called to worship. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the given. Yeah. Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. I am so glad that you join us to worship today 
on the, Sabo, on the Signal YouTube platform. It is a pleasure to be alive, and I am sure you will agree with me that God is good. And as we come to worship him today, I pray that we will worship him in the beauty of holiness. This week, the youths have been taking charge, and what a week of prayer has it been. Just in case you have forgotten or you have missed, here's a quick rundown of the topics. Lord, I will go, renew me. Lord, I will go, fill me. Lord, I will go, free me. Lord, I will go, heal me. Lord, I will go, forgive me. Lord, I will go, guide me. And last night's topic, I will go, strengthen me. And we can all say it was a blessing. And today, we worship under the theme, Lord, I will go, empower me. Brothers and sisters and visitors, I welcome you today and let us go. I pray that you will go, I will go. Have a blessed Sabbath.
Happy Sabbath, church. The scripture reading is taken from 1 Corinthians 4, verses 9 and 10. For I think that God had set forth us, the apostles, last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world, the world, and to angels and to men. We are fools of Christ, we are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but we are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are desperate. This is the word of the Lord. My brother, I see that you are heavy laden in your travel. What do you take with you? We take a portion of our choicest blessings. Many want to go but need resources to help them. I see. We encourage everyone to return unto the Lord the tenth portion that he requested. In addition to that, Please give them generously to aid in fulfilling the divine command to God into all the world and preach the gospel. You may give your gifts online. The account number is on the screen. Our brother Jordan will play a sweet music that will make your heart lighter as you support the cause of God.
book Education, Ellen White admonishes us, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. It's Christ's command to his followers. Not that all are called to be ministers or missionaries in the ordinary sense of the term, but all may be workers with him in giving the glad tidings to their fellow men. To all, great or small, learned or ignorant, old or young, the command is given. Will you go? As we listen to this mandate and accept this mandate and this commission, it's time for us to hear a word from the Lord. At this time, we'll ask our elder to introduce who is the breaker of the bread. Today, we are happy to have in our midst Pastor Joseph Francis, who will be sharing with us the word of God. Pastor Francis is a graduate of Northern Caribbean University, where he obtained a bachelor's degree in pastoral ministry. Wilmore SDA is currently his home church. There he provides service to the Lord. Pastor Francis is married to Dacia, and together they have so far a daughter. His philosophy is in keeping with the world church mission at this time. His philosophy is, if Jesus will go with me, I will go. Pastor Francis is passionate about many things. But brothers and sisters, he is passionate about souls and preaching the word of God. Today we will hear from God's servant before we listen to the word of God, we will have this time have a song of meditation. God bless you. We'll be singing our theme song for the week, Lead Me Lord, I Will Follow. Please sing along with us.
bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Lead me, Lord. I will follow. Lead me, Lord. I will go. It has been a privilege <clears throat> sitting here this morning and listening to the young people as they worship for the Lord. I note the word I said, worship. I, 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 I didn't say the program that they are putting on. I said as they worship with the Lord or for the Lord. I want to thank the pastor, elders, for the invitation to be here this morning to share with you the word of the living God. I am blessed from morning until now. I am truly blessed to finally be in the house of the Lord. Now I know what it meant to David when he said, let, when, I was happy when they say, let us go into the house of the Lord. Welcome each and every one who is uh, watching via YouTube or wherever you're tuning in from. We here having a wonderful time. I wish you all could be here today, uh, but you can't. But from the safety of your homes, even where you are, you can worship the Lord with us today. God is indeed a good God. And so for the next, uh, from a preaching portion, I will be coming to you from the book of First Chronicles, chapter 4, verses 9 and verse 10. I also acknowledge the theme for today, Lord, empower me, I will go. Turn your Bibles with me if you have them and you're so pleased. To the book of First Chronicles, chapter 4, verses 9. And ten says, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren, and his mother called him Jabez, saying, Because I bear him in sorrow. Pay attention to that. And Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my course, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested there is a song that has become a part of me and uh, I need to sing it this morning just the chorus that is now I'm not a singer and uh, I heard the young people while they were singing so while I try to sing my chorus, I'll ask you to join in with me, but don't laugh at me because I'm not as good as you. 
as I watched you this morning, it came to my mind that when I was a young man, I wouldn't be standing there, elder, and singing, right? But these young people are brave. The song says, yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your ways. I say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. I say yes. When your spirit speak to me, with my whole heart I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. Oh, I say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your ways. I say yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you and obey when your spirit speaks to me. With my whole heart, I agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. One more time, one more time. I'll say yes, Lord. Your will and to your ways, I say yes, Lord. Yes, I will trust you and obey when your spirit speaks to me. With my whole heart, I agree, and my answer will be yes, Lord. Yes, prayerfully, no, prayerfully, 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 Father. You are God and there's none like you. And as I come to you this morning, O oh God, nothing in my hands I bring, but simple to your cross I cling. Hide Francis, O oh God, beyond the cross this morning. Let not Francis be seen, but you high and lifted up. Father, may it be when we are through here this morning, somebody will receive a blessing and we will be in equipped and empowered. And so we all will say, I will go. Be with us, O oh God, today we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you very much, praise team. Thank you so much. If I could get a little bit more bass on this mic, then that would be good. Just a little bit more bass. I acknowledge a theme, Lord, empower me, I will go. But I'm coming from the topic, conceived in pain, delivered in victory. Conceived in pain, delivered in victory. Now, have you ever begin reading the Bible and get to those chapters concerning the genealogies where everybody begot somebody important? Many times, I don't know about you, but you just kind of skip over that part of the Bible quickly because in your mind they don't deal with much that can apply to you. Neither can you truly in depth learn everybody's name. Uh, somehow it just feels as if that is not important to you. I don't know about you, but I've reached those places many times before when I can't even call the names of some of the individuals in the Bible. And so I skipped over, over them. You can't digest it. 
And so you say, this is not for you. In First Chronicles chapter 4, this is a very interesting passage. Here we see the chapter begin the same way. Where Ezra started to name the important persons in Judah Elder. And so he says the son of Judah, Perez, Hezron, Carmel, Or, and Shubal. And he continued down the line. But while he was calling the names of these individuals, what was going on here is that the children of Israel had just returned from Babylonian captivity. And now they want to establish themselves. And so therefore Ezra was now making and calling all the important names. But while he was doing that, he stopped to mention a random man. One random name by the name of Jabez. Stay with the preacher today because we are going somewhere. You will not find a read of him much throughout the Bible. As a matter of fact, verse 9 and verse 10 and verse 25 is the only place where you will find the name Jabez. But what these verses say about Jabez holds a great deal. The name Jabez, my brothers and sisters, only three times. It is mentioned in verse 55 of, of First Chronicles chapter 2, Jabez is a town and the clans of the scribe who live at Jabez. This town in Judah was located near Bethlehem. Then Jabez is mentioned again here in the opening passage. And the opening passage says Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. Here it says his mother had named him Jabez. Stay with the passage saying I gave birth to him in pain. I gave birth to him in pain. I don't know what was happening here. What was taking place in the life of Jabez's mother. Why she would call his son name Jabez. The name Jabez comes from the Hebrew word Yabitz, which means to grieve, sorrowful. He calls pain. One can assume that something about his birth was exceptionally uh, painful, more than the usual. Now, I don't know what was taking place, as I mentioned before. But when you go through the passage of scripture, you recognize that the name Jabez is not a good name. His mother said he, she named him Jabez because in pain I gave birth to him. Stay with the preacher this morning. I don't know what she was going through, but something happened. It is said that women, when they are pregnant, if they eat much ice, then in delivery, something would happen there. They, they would have much pain. But here is it that the mother says, in pain, I gave birth to him. Uh, probably, probably, Jabez, uh, probably she had him out of wedlock, the Bible 
did not say. But the truth and in fact is, he received a name, a dysfunctional name. Jabez, my brothers and sisters, could not live like normal children do. His name meant something. Every time Jabez walked down the road, folk would look at him and even the call of his name. They remember that this boy was a troublemaker. Every time he walked down the road, they remember his name. His own mother says, I gave him name Jabez for in pain I gave birth to him. You see, in Bible times, a name was important. A name of ten times defines a person's future, what they would become. And you see that going through the scripture, like Solomon means peace. Solomon was the only king of Israel that did not have to go into physical battle. And so his name meant mean peace. David means beloved. Daniel means God is my judge. Jeremiah means Yahweh will exalt. Isaiah means God is salvation. Moses means to pull out or to draw out because they took him from the water. And of course, the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus means Savior, Emmanuel, God with us, Christ, the anointed one. Thank God this morning. But a name means something. So perhaps Jabez's mother was predicting her baby's future. Her baby had a dysfunctional name. Little room for a mistake. This boy had it when he was growing up. Jabez's name was hopeless and dysfunctional. He was expected to live like a vagabond, picking from the gutters of life, begging for mercy at the hands of his family and at his friends if he could find any. Let me tell you something. None of us today want to live like Jabez did. Pause today to acknowledge the fact that many of us here in church are even watching us this morning have a dysfunctional name. I'm happy this morning to tell you that even though you have a dysfunctional name, there's a God up in heaven who sits high and look low and he doesn't care what your name is. He doesn't care what label you're going under. He cares about you. Are you with me this morning? It doesn't matter what your name is. He wants to give you a new name. This morning, I'm happy that he is willing this morning to take a broken heart. He is willing this morning to transform somebody who is a nobody. I am happy this morning to tell somebody that Jesus Christ cares when your mother and your father don't care, when your, when your brothers and your sisters don't care, when church members sometimes don't care. I'm happy this morning to tell you about my Jesus because he cares for us. I'm happy this morning to tell somebody about him. Jabez, here we go, was more honorable than his brothers. That's what the scripture says. Jabez, 
was more honorable than his brothers. But how, how Jabez became honorable. You see, Jabez was more honorable because of his relationship with God. In fact, in 1 Chronicles 4 verse 9, it says Jabez was more honorable than this, than his brothers. The record of the genealogy of Judah was interrupted just to mention the name of Jabez. And therefore, his relationship must have been exceptional, noteworthy. Stay with me. The word, the word honorable here does not mean that God, he was God's favorite. Stay with the preacher. But rather, he had a heart that was pleasing to God. And God therefore chose him and empowered him so that he will go. Are you with me? It would probably be much similar to that concerning Joseph. It is not that Joseph was preferred by God. But Joseph's heart was humble unto the leading of God. Stay with the preacher this morning. The Bible says that God, my brothers and sisters, is no respecter of person. He doesn't care who you are, where you have been. All he wants this morning is for you to surrender your heart to him and he will make all things new. That's all he's asking of us this morning. My brothers and sisters in those days, in those who obey will obtain the mercy and favor of God according to Chronicles, Second Chronicles 16 and verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord, my brother and sisters, run to and fro throughout the earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them, of the hearts that is perfect towards him. Can I say something this morning? There are some of us, we would have been laboring in church. And sometimes it feels as if you are not even acknowledged. You have been laboring at your workplace. And sometimes it seems as if you are not even been acknowledged. But let me tell you something. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord runs to and fro throughout the earth. And he sees your sacrifices. He knows your heart. He knows who you are. And he's ready to reward you. But all he's looking for is the perfect heart to watch him. The word honorable here in the Hebrew is kabad, which means to be heavy. It is the Hebrew word for which re re referred to kabad or the glory of God which is the heavy present, which is his heavy present. Jabez, my brothers and sisters, uh, experience more of the heaviness of the presence of God than any of his brothers. He seek the Lord. And he found him, he prayed to him, he humbled himself, and God honored him. When we normally read this passage of scripture, I have heard a lot of preachers preach it. And when they normally preach it, all they preach about is God enlarging my territory. And here they're talking about the cars. They're talking about their money. They're talking about uh, physical things. But that's not what Jabez was saying. Jabez was saying, God enlarging my spiritual territory. Help me, O oh God, to do your will. Empower me and I will go and do your mission. I wish we have some some young people today who will be who are willing to say God experience the 
the spirit of God moving upon his life. And the evidence of that was pretty clear. If we, if we want God's presence, we must forget about our past failures. Are you with me, church? And mistakes. Forget about those who ridicule you. Forget about those who fight against you. Forget about your past mistakes. God doesn't really care about that. What God cares about is the now. Are you with me? Jabez, though he received a dysfunctional name, he never allowed that to stop him. He never allowed the laughing to stop him. He never allowed people mocking him to stop him. Jabez, seek the Lord. And the Lord found him. And he's still looking for some people today who have a sacred obsession with him. You see, there are too many of us, even here in church, who wants to obtain God's blessings, but we don't want his presence. We want God's blessing, but we don't want to stay in his presence. And as soon as things get rough, we are ready to move out. As soon as you can't find something this morning, you're ready to turn your back on God. As soon as somebody says something about you, you're ready to give up on God as if God has done anything to you. But God is looking this morning for some persons who will say, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. God is looking for a young man today who will say, though the heaven, for heaven falls, yet will I trust him. God is looking for some persons today who will say, though I have no money, yet will I trust him. God is looking for some persons today who will say, though nobody go with me, yet I will go. He's still looking for some people today. God have a mission for all of us. Let me show you this. Jabez was not an Israelite. For many of us who read the passage of scripture, we thought he was an Israelite. But Jabez was not an Israelite. It was from Rechab that the tribe of the Rechabites, Rechabites derived their name. And you find that in 1 Chronicles chapter 2, verse 55. The house of Rechab is identified with the, with the section of the Canaanites. A Midianite tribe who came from Kenyan with Israel. <clears throat> they were nomadics, but he and his people, Jabez and his people, had long been worshippers of Jehovah God. Stay with me. He was circumcised, though he was not, uh, uh, he, he, he didn't have to. He worshipped God. Because he loved the Lord. Are you with me? The worship of Baal was offensive, offensive to him. Uh, uh, these things, what, he was not looking for, for, for just good favor. He was not looking for physical things. He was looking for a spiritual blessing from God and God looked down on him and he saw his heart and God blessed him immensely. Are you with me? But Jabez, my brothers and sister, though he was not an Israelite, though he was not a seventh day Adventist, he recognized the true God and he humbled himself. He said, I want to be a part of thy God. He humbled himself and God saw in him a heart that he can use and God used him. Jabez prayed 
He called upon God when all others forsook him, when he couldn't find any friend, when he couldn't find anybody, he found Jesus. Jesus, my brothers and sisters, he's still looking for somebody who is a nobody. He's still looking for somebody who is broken hearted. He's still looking this morning for somebody who is destitute and afflicted. He's still looking for somebody who is looking for a friend. And I'm here to tell somebody this morning that the best friend to have is Jesus. I don't know who you are, what you're going through, where you have been. But I pass here by today to tell somebody that Jesus is available and he's waiting for you. He's waiting on you just to call upon him. He's just waiting this morning. He's just waiting this morning for somebody to call upon him. Because nobody who calls on him, he will turn away. There might be somebody this morning who is listening or watching and you might even believe that because others have forsaken you, then Jesus himself surely have forsaken you. But I pass by Sydenham today to tell somebody that you have not been forsaken. God is still here. He is waiting and he's ready to answer your prayer. He's waiting and he's ready to answer your call. All he's waiting for and is for you to call on him. But will you call on the Lord today? Will you call on the Lord today? Brothers and sisters, friends of the living God, the book of Psalms chapter 51 verse 17 tells us that a broken spirit and a contrite heart God will not despise. Yes, this morning you have been facing it for a time now. And probably COVID-19 have added to your misery. And somehow you want a way out. Somehow you feel like you are sinking. And somebody might even come your way trying to help you out. But God is looking for somebody who will humble themselves to him this morning. He's still looking. He's still looking. But are you willing to call upon him? In Bible times, people would name their children, brothers and sisters, for certain reason. For certain reason. They have gotten their names based on what the parents want them to become in life. Or sometimes based on a prophecy. And listen to me, somebody who is listening today. Many of you have a dysfunctional name. There's somebody here, to, somebody who's watching today who might can't even walk through your community because you have a dysfunctional name. There's somebody here today who might be known as a robber. Somebody who might be known as a abuser. Somebody who might be known as a child molester. Somebody this morning who might be walking on the road. And even though you're walking, you're walking but your head is held down. Why? Because you know what you have done in your life.
your community. You know who you are. But listen to me this morning. There is a God in heaven who sits high and looks low and he wants to change your name. He wants to take your dysfunctional name and give you a name that is called by his name. He wants to help you today. He can help you. But the question is, are you willing? Are you willing to be helped? Listen to me carefully this morning as I try to bring the sermon to a close. Don't believe that what I'm talking is not true. I know what it is to walk in your community. Want to have things, not able to have it. Want to be in certain cleat and can't be there because you're not seen like the rest of the community. I know what it is to be in school young ones and when they are picking the, the team for the cricket they won't pick you because you are not popular I know what it is to be playing jockey on two sides not because you are not qualified but because you're, they don't see you as popular listen to me this morning as I speak to somebody my sermon is not over, but I'm closing. Listen to me. God, who sit high and look low, knows your name. He knows who you are. You have a dysfunctional name. You have nothing substantial. Listen to me carefully. I know what it feels like. At the age of 20, I still couldn't read. Listen to me carefully. I know what it is to want to read and can't read. There's some young folk, or even an elderly person who is listening to me this morning, and you feel trapped where you are you're looking left right and center and nobody is there to help you you cry out but nobody is feeling your pain nobody is sympathizing or empathizing with you you look left right and center families and friends have forsaken you but this morning there's somebody who wants to accept you at the age of 20, I couldn't read. Wanted to read, but couldn't read. And let me tell you something as I bring the service to a close. I remember at that age when I called on the Lord Jesus Christ. I was, it was... That night, I was in a dance, sitting down on a wall. And at that time, I was watching everybody dancing themselves away. I don't know, but I reached to a place where I was by myself. And while I was there, Elder, sitting down, watching everybody dancing, I, I was wondering, it came to me and I said, what? Something like something said to me, what are you doing here? Somehow dancing never feel the same way. And I sat in that dance hall and I said, God, save me. I, I, I said right there, I said, Lord, help me that this will be the last dance I ever attain. I prayed that prayer that Sunday night. And then... I forget the prayer. I remember that I went to, 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 to the farm. My brother and I, we went to dig yam. 
way down in a gully. And when we were coming up, I had the bag on my head. He was walking beside me. I never remember that I prayed the prayer. But thank God there is a God who when you forget, he will never forget you. Are you with me this morning? When I was coming up, I had that bag on my head. And my brother walking behind me. I'm talking to somebody this morning. And while we were walking, and we were talking, I felt something rush from my head to do down to the sole of my feet. I couldn't contain it, Elder. I tried my best, but I couldn't. I stopped, I put down the bag, and I said to my brother, go and leave me. Normally, he would ask me, he would question me, why? Because we're having a good conversation. This time, he never asked me any question. He passed me. But while he was passing on one side, I was passing, I was turning on the other side because I didn't want him to recognize that I was crying. I put down the bag and I wrestled with the Lord. That is how you, I get that song, yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. And every time I, I, I go up to preach, I remember that song. I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something, young people. Couldn't read, but I went to church, and there I found Jesus. And Christ taught me. And now let me tell you something. I don't need to tell you the rest of the story because I'm closing. All I'm here this morning to tell somebody that you are in the valley of decision. You are down to your lowest level. You are rocked about on, any, on every side. You don't know where to turn. You are hungry and don't have, even have any food. I know what that feels like also. But there is a God. There is a God who if you give your heart to him this morning, if you allow him, he will come in and he will sup with you. He will empower you to go. The Bible says Jabez became a doctor of the law. Not an Israelite, but he humbled himself to God and God empowered him and gave him a mission. Jabez, my brothers and sisters, said, I will go. And he went. The history tells us that the, a town in Second Chronicles chapter 2, verse 55, was even called by the name of Jabez. He was so popular, even though he had a dysfunctional name, he overcome it by the grace of God. You can overcome this morning too. I don't know what you're going through this morning, this afternoon rather, what you are facing. But as the praise team join me, you want somebody. You have been searching for a long time now. You're wondering whether or not you can make it. Let me tell you something what the scripture says. It's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. You will never ever make it by yourself. But with God's grace, you can you can make it. God wants to empower you this morning. He wants to give you a new name. He wants to change your name. He wants you, my brothers and sisters, to enjoy the life that he has for you. The praise team is about to sing. But while they are singing, a link might be up today. I want for you this morning to contact us here at Sydney. We will pray with you. We will pray for you. We want God to come in your life. But are you willing this morning? 
Are you willing to give it all to him today? Are you willing? Are you willing? Are you willing? Somebody, somebody, somebody online, somebody's watching. He wants to touch you this morning. He wants to touch you today. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's joy in Jesus Christ. Oh, and now I know. He touched me. And made, and made me whole. He wants to make somebody whole this morning. What are you going through? Sin Who are you? Who are you? Sin you can never meet him and be the same again. He's waiting this morning with stretched out arms. He's talking to you. You, yes, you. You backslider, he's talking to you. He loves you. You, young man, you, young lady, you, elderly man, he's talking to you. He's talking to you this morning. Oh, he touched me. Oh, he touched me. promise you, you'll never be the and same again. The joy that floods my soul. Oh, oh, God, something happened. Something happened. And now I know. He can touch he you today. want to be whole this morning? Do you want? Do you want to be whole? Do you want to be whole? He wants to touch you today. He wants to come in your life and you will never be the same again. It's a closing of a youth week up but there's some youth this morning some child, some woman, some man who needs Jesus Christ. He can touch you and make you whole. And I promise you that you will never be the same again. Hell is going to come and pray with us this morning. But I want you today to listen, to listen to the song as they sing it once more. God, my brothers and sisters, want to come in your heart. I don't know what you have been going through, who have been putting you down, who told you that you will never make it. But I declare today by the grace of the living God that you can make it by God's grace. He touched me. He touched me. And today he wants to touch you. And I promise you, your life will never, never, never be the same again. Just give me a chance this morning as elder prays for us. Oh God, we thank you for having been with us 
we felt your presence in this place today. Thank you, Lord, for having spoken to us, to your manservant. Oh God, like Jabez, we declare today, Lord, that you will enlarge our territory. Indeed, Lord, please bless us. We pray, Heavenly Father, that we will, first of all, surrender our lives to you. We're happy to know, Lord, and we are confident that a surrendered life to Christ is a life that Christ can use. Oh God, we pray as a church that we will be so surrendered to you so that, Lord, in this time, in this pandemic, we will be volunteers to go for you. Oh God, we pray that today, young people who have listened to the voice of God will make themselves available to go, to preach the word, to share the love of Jesus so that you can come and take us from the sin cursed earth. Thank you, Lord, for having spoken to your man servant. Continue to bless him. Continue to prosper him. Continue to give him messages like these so that your kingdom can be a son and you can come. We pray, Lord, in a very special way for your church. We know, Lord, that you have given us a message, an end time message, the three angels' message to call men and women to true worship. We pray, Heavenly Father, that we will do our part. We pray that even in the upcoming evangelistic series, we pray that all of us will invite someone, will share the link with someone, that somebody, some visitor, someone who have not yet known Christ, will come to know you who is life eternal. Bless us, Heavenly Father. Keep us in the other palm of your hand. Forgive us in our moment of indiscretion. And we pray, Father, and look forward to the day when Jesus will come and take us from the sinker's earth. Until then, Lord, keep us true. Keep us faithful. Keep us working. And keep us watching, we pray in Jesus' name. The closing hymn will be Marvelous Grace, hymn number 109, Marvelous Grace.
have come to the end of another beautiful Sabbath, Sabbath design service, divine service, and we've come to the end of another beautiful week of prayer. The commission is for us. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them everything that I have commanded you, not so not a little bit of the things, but all things. And lo, I'll be with you always, even unto the end of the earth. Now will you go? Merciful Father, as your people are tuned in and they're here, Lord, I ask that your spirit will touch their hearts. Help them, dear God, to recognize the commission and that is our responsibility as Christians, as children of God, to go and spread the gospel, bring others to you. Lord, we ask that you will be with us. As you've promised us, you'll never leave us nor forsake us and you'll be with us unto the end of the earth. Keep us safe in your name, I pray, Lord. Dismiss us, Lord, with blessings we pray, as from thy worship we go our way, guiding life's conflict all through the day, safe in thy kingdom, Our worship experience is not over. This afternoon, we will continue with the Signs of the Times evangelistic series.
rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout for victory when we, when when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout for victory. Rejoicing that will be when we all, when we all see Jesus, Jesus. We'll, we'll sing and shout for victory. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing. Shout the victory.